So you don't think massive, ridiculous cash flow can be achieved in today's market? Well, I'm about to share with you the five conditions that I believe you can align to see ridiculous, outrageous financial freedom type return on investment and cash flow when investing in short-term rentals today, not three years ago post pandemic, but today. Had I known what I'm about to share with you when I was younger, it would have cut my time to financial freedom easily by a half or a third of the time it took us. And in fact, I can look back and point to deals that were missing one or two of these conditions and I can see how the performance suffered compared to deals that had all five. I'm currently working with a couple in my first vacation rental investment blueprint program named Michelle and Joe Norman. And you can check out the recent interview that I did with Michelle on my podcast, the Living Off Rentals podcast, to hear more about the specifics and great advice that she offers. But she followed this advice that I'm about to share with you to a T. And she created financial freedom type cash flow with nine short-term rentals within her first year of starting to work with me. And she never even visited most of them. And they were all relatively low cost and attainable with financing that's available to pretty much everyone. On the other hand, unfortunately, I've come across people who ignore this advice and invest in a way that intuitively just feels right. And these conditions that I'm gonna share with you, they're not intuitive. And these people who ignore this advice often struggle, especially if they don't follow condition number five, which I think is one of the most important ones and one that a lot of people skip. So without further ado, let's get into this cocktail of conditions that leads to uncovering massive short-term rental cash flow. Condition number one, the highest combination of nightly rate and occupancy compared to the lowest average purchase price. So this one seems obvious, but what's not obvious is where this perfect combination exists. If you're like most people, you're going to gravitate toward the popular short-term rental locations like Palm Springs or Pigeon Forge or Destin Beach, or you're gonna pick the large cities because that's where it feels like most people are gonna travel to. What I'd encourage you to do is to stop thinking about what it feels like most people are doing and start to look at the actual numbers. This is exactly what Kelly and Kent did, who I work with. They considered buying in the popular vacation area of Traverse City, Michigan, but after doing the research, they could see that the nightly rate and occupancy combo in Interlochen, which is right next door and not nearly as mainstream, is actually higher because it's not as seasonal as the more mainstream Traverse City, which actually nets you more income on average, while at the same time, when you look at the median purchase price, the median purchase price is about half in interlocking compared to that of Traverse City. So half the price, which means lower expenses like mortgage, taxes, insurance, etc., yet just as much income based on what short-term rentals are getting in terms of nightly rate and occupancy, which means ROI and cash flow that are awesome. Condition number two, which really is kind of along the same lines as condition number one, is to leverage markets that are just outside of these really short-term rental regulated or restricted areas, which are often larger cities. What cities typically do is they make these rules or they pass these laws that restrict short-term rentals. But if you think about it, what that does is it restricts the supply, but it doesn't cut down on the demand whatsoever. It's not like they're turning people away in terms of their demand. Actually, the demand is growing every single day because more and more people are using Airbnb every single day. So these people will search this city and see that there's not nearly enough supply because the supply has been restricted. And so if you own in an area just outside of these cities that's much more short-term rental friendly, then you can often capitalize on the spillover demand of these cities that are really restrictive. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia is a perfect example of this. They just made it very difficult to invest in short-term rentals in Atlanta, but there's all kinds of other towns, suburbs just outside of Atlanta, you know, that are uh, right next door that are getting all of this spillover demand and are doing very well. And often they're at a fraction of the cost. Condition number three is to pick an area that has some local draws. So after you've checked the box on condition number one and condition number two, you don't wanna just pick in some random area outside of a large city that has no draws to it. So what I mean by local draws is something as simple as a museum, a water park, a beach, a mall, 
uh, casino, any of these things that are gonna draw people there in addition to the reasons that people travel just in general, just to visit family, to go to weddings, to go to funerals, for work. These are all reasons that people will book your place in addition to the local draws. What I don't recommend is to pick areas with the national mainstream draws. So if you take an area like Disney World, you've got a lot of short-term rentals there and a lot of short-term rental competition. You also have purchase prices that have been propped up by Disney. Because Disney exists, the purchase price is a lot higher. It's grown even a lot more over the last few years. And so all of these short-term rentals are pretty dependent on this theme park that exists. And I'm not saying Disney's going away anytime soon, but who knows what could happen. And so I don't like to base everything, put all my eggs in one basket on one mainstream draw, in addition to the fact that it's gonna be a lot more competitive, a lot more expensive to invest there. I would much rather fly under the radar, pick an area just outside of these restrictive larger cities where you can buy at a fraction of the cost, it's less competitive, and there's some local draws to that area that are gonna bring people there. Condition number four is some level of uniqueness or personalized experience. This is a big reason that people say they travel using Airbnb. They say they like the personalized experience as opposed to the nameless, faceless, corporate hotel. So if you're a recovering long-term rental investor like I am, this is a really tough concept to wrap your head around because you're used to a three bedroom house renting for what a three bedroom house rents for in a certain market. The experience, the design, the amenities, they don't matter. A three bedroom is gonna get a three bedroom regardless of what type of cabinets you put in or any of the special touches that you create. This is not the case with short-term rentals. You get big outsized rewards for uniqueness and creating a special experience. This doesn't mean that you have to build a giant potato house that people can rent, but it should have some features outside of just the typical house that's really gonna catch the attention of a guest, particularly when it comes to the photos. This can come from home design or it can come from furnishings. This is the fun part of this type of investing and you can really, really get creative. Finally, condition number five, in my opinion, is the most important one when it comes to creating really ridiculously high cash flow. And that is multiple streams of income on one property. It's amazing how much higher your net cash flow is when you have one set of relatively affordable expenses, but you've got multiple units renting out for a few hundred dollars per night. It's actually pretty easy to bring in over six figures of annual income on one relatively affordable property when this is the case, when you've checked the boxes of the other four in addition to this fifth one of having multiple units or multiple streams of income with one fixed set of expenses. The net cash flow or the take home that you get is typically off the charts. You could check out an example of one that we recently purchased just like this in this recent case study video that I just made. This property brought in close to $20,000 in gross income just in this last month of July. And the property cost is just over $300,000, which leads to pretty crazy cash flow. If you wanna make sure you're checking all the boxes on these conditions the next time you buy a property, I've created a guide that outlines all five of these conditions, plus it provides some bonus tips for each one. And you can download that by clicking on the link in the description below, or you can just go to livingoffrentals.com forward slash cash flow. If this video was helpful, please let me know by punching that little thumbs up below the video. And you can also subscribe because I'm planning to do some live deal analysis coming up on this channel. So if you wanna catch that, hit the subscribe button in the little notification bell next to it to stay informed when new videos are released or when I go live. I'll see you in the next video.